are we alone? To this day, the inhabitants of planet Earth have looked to the stars for proof of other life. But the truth isn't out there, it's in here. Since World War II, the British government has been watching us, watching the skies. Buried in the vaults of the Ministry of Defence are thousands of reports on UFO sightings, some left unexplained. But now, after decades of secrecy, the files are being released. And for the first time, the truth about Britain's UFOs is revealed. Spring 1944. Britain was engaged in heavy bombing raids over Germany. Rumours of strange, unidentified missiles were getting through to top command. Considered a threat to public morale, the MOD files reveal that the order to keep them secret came right from the top. Sightings such as the one seen by gunner Bernard Dyer. Other World War II aircrew had also reported unexplained sightings. And we now know that at least one of these reports was suppressed. And the order to do so came right from the top. Wartime Prime Minister Winston Churchill was so terrified the report would leak out, he ordered a 50-year blackout. Mr. Churchill declared that the UFO incident should be immediately classified for at least 50 years, and its status reviewed by a future Prime Minister. Churchill's order referred specifically to a late World War II sighting made by a British air crew returning from a reconnaissance mission over Germany. The files record, My grandfather was present during a debate about an unexpected incident experienced by an RAF bomber crew. The MOD files show that the story originates from the grandson of Churchill's bodyguard, who had been present at an urgent meeting between the Prime Minister and the US commander of the Allied forces, General Eisenhower, who discussed the incident together. The leading aircraft expert was also at the meeting. Churchill was determined this would go no further. But the file goes further. One extraordinary line explains just how fearful Churchill was of public reaction to this UFO sighting, if it ever got out. This event should be immediately classified since it would create mass panic amongst the general population and destroy one's belief in the church. But the files also reveal that this wasn't the first time Churchill had got embroiled in UFO sightings. In October 1912, um, there was um, sightings of uh, mysterious lights in the sky um, over the, um, the dockyards of Sheerness in Essex. And Winston Churchill was the first Lord of the Admiralty and he, he had to uh, look into this. And Churchill had to admit in Parliament that he couldn't explain what had been seen. The files show that even after the war, Churchill took a personal interest in unexplained sightings, UFO or not. The files show that the World War II leaders were desperate to keep such sightings away from the public. The next file reveals how, even decades later, the government was still panicking about UFOs. Many UFO experts believe that the Pitlockery file illustrates one of the most significant UFO conspiracies of recent times. It involves photographs of an unidentified object captured flying over a remote Scottish valley. The photos were sent to the MOD, but mysteriously went missing. Journalist Mark Pilkington has spent years trying to track down these UFO images. The Pitlockery photographs in the MOD files date back to the 4th of August 1990, when two minutes on the A9 near Calvine, near Pitlockery, allegedly saw a large diamond-shaped craft hovering in the air for about 10 minutes and took six photographs of it. And the object that they claimed to have seen was accompanied by two aircraft, which the MOD later identified as Harriers. The photographer has never been identified. He sent the six photographs to the Scottish Daily Record newspaper. The paper never ran the story. Instead, they referred them to the MOD for investigation. All that remains in the files is a photocopy of the alleged photographs. Ufologists later mocked up this photo of what was seen. But Nick Pope dealt with the original photos and file when he worked behind the MOD desk. Both the Defence Intelligence staff and the Joint Air Reconnaissance Intelligence Centre analysed this very carefully and the consensus was, was clear on this. This was a real object. It was maybe 25, 30 metres in diameter. I sat down with my opposite number from the Defence Intelligence staff at a briefing about UFOs. We discussed this photograph extensively. This was something that was of defence interest because clearly it could do something that we couldn't and we wanted that technology. The MOD was determined to play down the incident. During his time with the Ministry, Pope had a blown up copy of the photograph on his office wall until it was personally taken down by his superior. One suggestion was that this was a secret prototype American spy plane 
my head of division convinced himself that this probably was some secret aircraft or drone, and he ordered that this be removed. The MOD were clearly worried about public reaction, just as Churchill had been four decades earlier. So was there a cover-up by the MOD over the mysterious Pitlochry photographs? Mark Pilkington is still looking for the real Pitlochry photographs to find out just what did put Britain's defences to the test. But six years later, on Britain's east coast, another UFO sighting sparks off a full-scale military investigation and a direct challenge to the Secretary of State for Defence. In 1996, the Ministry of Defence was drawn into a serious breach of UK defences by a UFO over East Anglia. MOD files revealed it not only involved the police, Coast Guard and RAF, but a call to the Defence Secretary to scramble jet fighters. It was one of the biggest UFO scares ever. And it all started one quiet October night on the East Coast. <laughs> 